changes to the brand new right. In here, it's a contract negotiation, city staff present. Um, is uh, Kelly, Renata, and Carrie, and of course myself. Um, and any other formalities we need to cover off in the time? No. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm going to do some talking up front, and then I'm going to be quiet, and you're going to get a chance. So, um, Carrie, I didn't get a chance. I didn't tell you, I asked, I asked Kelly, I was like, where would you be most comfortable? She said, in my car. <laughs> <laughs> so just acknowledging first, you know, the, this is this is you know not the, not the most comfortable thing, of course, not to have to do in uh, in, in this public setting. Um, so just it's just me and you having a conversation, and um, we'll, we'll forget all the all the rest, and we'll and we'll get through it. Um, I want to reiterate that I, I believe that we we want the same thing overall, and that is to reach an agreement that with terms that are fair to you, to the city, to the citizens, uh, and that will keep you in, in, in New Smyrna Beach and make you the next clerk of, of New Smyrna. Um, so, goal today is to talk through the key financial terms. Um, these will be folded into a larger contract that is still in process, uh, and then we'll distribute that back to you. Um, if Once you get that, the, the contract terms will be fairly standard you know, contract terms. If you have any issues with those, we can have another meeting to, to go through those contract terms. But again, those will be fairly standard. And of course, these are the main, you know, these are the main variable terms. Um, just so you know, going into this, I spent a, a ton of time looking at as much data as possible from other cities. I bugged Renina for a ton of data, Carrie for a lot of data. Um, I, I, I didn't focus so much on what prior employees had or what other employee, other contracted employees had. Uh, I focus more on the current market conditions for clerks um, and what I thought may be advantageous to you in your situation. Um, but everybody's situation is unique, so this is a starting point and we can talk through the things and you can say, well, no, 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 I'd, I'd really like to do you know, this a little different or, or, or you know, however, however that unfolds. Um, so I, I fully expect that you'll have uh, questions or requests that we can talk through. Um, it's not, not going to be held against you in any way to bring stuff up and say, hey, I, you know, asking for this or what about this or questioning something. Um, even if we can't accommodate it, once we get past this point, then we, we all just move on. We put this behind us and we move on. So, um, and I want to be clear that this, you know, I, I've tried to be fair. I've looked at the data. I've tried to be fair. Um, you know, if, if anyone was expecting that, you know, this is a used car type deal where I try to come in with some lowball offer and expect for this to be some haggling, that's not how I treat employees. That's not how I want to be treated as an employee. So that's not what I've, I've tried to do here. Um, and uh, last couple of things, Carrie and Renina are here uh, to answer any questions that either of us have. Uh, and they're here to provide advice to me as the city representative, but just I know this is, is different because normally they're the people you also would go to for advice, uh, but in this case, they represent the city and they're not your advisors. So I encourage you to, to review you know, these terms or, and any proposed contract with your legal or tax professionals, um, and we can make all the time needed for you to, to do that. Uh, again, I think it'll all be fairly standard. Um, and certainly, if you have questions, ask them, but just if, if at any point they hedge their, their response, they're just trying to be very fair to that. Um, okay, I think that was all that I had. Do you have any, any questions or comments before we kind of dive in and start going over anything? No. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to start with talking through the, the, the whole package, kind of going down the list. Um, you received this in advance, uh, but of course you and I couldn't go back and forth on this. So um, as we go through it, you can jump in with questions or you can wait until the end and we can kind of talk about it as a, as a total package. I did try to focus on it as kind of total compensation. So as we give and take, understand that we're kind of trying to focus on that total compensation. So, um, but again, I don't know what's right for you and what means more to you. So um, base salary proposed by the city, uh, as you see there, 73,000, just a scotch higher than what you're, what you're sitting at right now in the interim. Um, there will be no increase in year one so you've already received that increase. Uh, and then in future years, that salary would be increased automatically at the rate of all the other director level positions. Uh, and then that can also be further adjusted up by the commission. And then we'd have the standard contract terms around um, you know, increases and how that, how that all works. 
Um, car allowance at 150 per month, and that's for travel within a 100 mile radius. We'd expect that to be non-reimbursable, covered under the car allowance. Uh, outside of that 100 mile radius, of course, would be uh, covered under the regular travel policy. Health insurance, right now I think we're covering just 100% of yours. Uh, city's prepared to offer 100% of yours plus 50% of any additional premium for any family or dependent care that you would like to you would like to carry. So to be clear how that works, if it's $1,000 to just cover you and it's you know 2000 to cover your dependents, we're covering the first thousand and then that incremental delta will cover 50% of whatever that incremental delta is. Uh, and as the plans change, it would always be that 50%, that's not a fixed number. The ICMA uh, would be uh, at 10%, so that would be that, that retirement account at 10%, funded at 10% of your annual salary. Uh, leave earned, you're currently earning about 144 hours annually and you have a, a max leave payout of 288 hours. And so that's, if you were to leave the city, you've earned those, you keep them, but they're capped at the 288 hours. Be uh, offering to move that up to the standard directorate level uh, PTO and holidays, which would be 192 hours of PTO, and then the, the, the published city holidays, which are um, standard. And then the max, the max accrual, so 192, and then the max payout, the 384, which is two years of that, of that 192. Um, these last two, the, the last two I kind of looked at together, and this is the one that we'll probably have maybe the most conversation about, and I want to make sure you, you understand it and, and what my thought process was. Um, so severance only pays out, obviously, if you're terminated. So I wanted to make sure we had a provision that rewarded positive performance and rewarded you having a long tenure with the city, a long and successful tenure, because that's what I expect, that's what I think will happen. Um, so the way I propose structuring this is a, a diminishing severance that starts at 20 weeks in year one, and then pro rata, and you can see that as it goes down from to 16, 12, 8, 4, and then from years uh, five forward at, uh, at no severance, but as that's declining, a, a deferred compensation, or a, we'll call it for lack of better terms, a 401k contribution. It's actually not a 401k, though. What is it for you all, Renee? That's a 40, 457. 457B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, a contribution of 2% of your salary starting in, in year two, going up to 3% in year three, and then 4% year five and beyond. Um, and I did some rough math on that. I'm sure you did as well. Um, and you know, obviously, over the, the longer you stay, the more that pays off for you. Um, and you know, I thought that would be a neat way of, again, rewarding you staying and having a successful career, and um, and you know, winning away the the severance. Um, so those are kind of the, the main um, the main terms. My my general thoughts that puts you in an overall compensation package, and, and every single one of these. You can find examples of at, at other cities you know, around. Um, so I didn't make any of this up. And from an overall compensation, I think it puts you in a, in a good spot from a market rate standpoint. Um, so, but what are your what are your thoughts? What are your questions? What are your concerns? What are your ideas? What are you thinking? Um, well, first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to calculate all of this and put it together for me. So I appreciate it. Uh, I agree with most of it. I, in fact, I'm honored that I'm thought of so highly, you know, it seems so thank you very much. The concerns that I, um, I'm fine with the base salary, okay. um, fine with the car allowance. Now, the other three um, that I wanted to discuss deal directly with my one dependent who's a minor, okay. who's 17, I didn't know what the age out is for dependent insurance. 26, 26. as long as they're in college. 26, as long as they're in college. Um, married. So what was, that, what was that last part? Unmarried. And, yeah, in college and, or, uh, and unmarried, unmarried, right? So, 26, in college, unmarried. Okay. Yeah, so if they get married, they automatically, no matter what age, I think, right? Or at least Correct. below eight, above 18, I think right. it is, yeah. So, okay. so yeah, un, unmarried up to 26 if they're in college. If they're in college, okay. Yeah. Is it also in your household or no? Um, 
There's no household okay. requirement. Because so, right, there would be a way yeah, in college yeah. that could yeah. be in your, yeah, okay. in your plan. So with that then, um, for the health insurance, I wanted to, it's not like I disagreed wholly with it, but if I could ask to pay 100% for my one dependent, for he and I, for say the next five years, at least until he's 21, because that way I know that he'll be out of college in a career of his own and I won't have to worry okay. about that. That uh, sort of holds hands with the severance. I get it. I understand the reasoning yep. on here. Um, but it would make me feel more secure if for five years until I know, you know, it's just going to be me. Um, if there's a way that we can see where it says 20 weeks salary year one, I didn't know if there's a way to even put in the contract um, a guaranteed 20 weeks for five years and then start with the decline. Okay. Uh, the leave payout, of course, and the leave earned is fine. And the last thing I had um, was ICMA that really doesn't have to do with my dependent. That's more of a personal thing. I, I looked at the contract um, for the prior clerk, and I know that this was his second retirement, and he was at 10%. So um, I know that I'm at 8, currently offered 10 with the proposal, but this is my only retirement, and I didn't know... Um, and this is where I expect to retire from. So, I mean, I would like to retire from. So I just wanted to know, I don't know the percentages that the other two appointees get in regards to that category, but I would hope to be around, if not approximate, to them because um, I know that I'm going to be here for a while. Okay. And the only other thing, it's just a question yep. on it. When um, the proposed changes in the column three down here, yep. if everything is approved and commission approves it, what date would that take effect? Yeah, so we, I mean, your, your contract out right now runs through whatever, but we would basically, once the, once the commission votes on it, we would be voting on some kind of an effective date at that, at that time, I think, right? Like we did before. Right. So I, I would, I would guess if we vote on this on the 12th, we'd probably make it effective on the 12th would be my, my guess. If we've got okay. the contract and everything ready, I mean, I don't want to speak for what the commission would do. That'd be the blank that we're kind of filling in as a body would be that effective date. But my wish would be that it would be uh, effective immediately or you know, maybe the next morning or something. So. Yeah. Okay. And the only other thing I didn't see on here okay. is that I uh, intend to pursue my MMC. I just submitted my certification for a certified municipal clerk. But my hopes in the future are to um, obtain the master municipal clerk. Okay. So in the contract, if there could be some type of wording that would allow me to put in the budget every year for continued education, that would mean a lot to me. So I wouldn't have to worry about that. And that could be achieved within three to five year guidelines. The academy's twice a year Okay. for that. And is that, not to put you on the spot, but is, is when you say continuing education, I mean, continuing education type funding is usually, you know, 5, 10K for maybe some, some course. It, so is it more in that ballpark? It's not like a college thing where it's like a $20,000 tuition check or anything, right? It's no, more the, it's not that. It's, okay. um, I have the, they go by a point system. It's broken down by education and experience. Yeah. And so right now, I just made both numbers to get the CMC. Um, to get MMC, it's an additional 60 points, I believe, mm -hmm. which will equate to just the academies, not university, just the academy. So it would just be the registration fee and the travel and lodging, and that doesn't max over at least 1400 Okay, all right, yeah. That's, uh, so, um, okay, got it. Anything else? Not that I could think of. That was okay. those were my main concerns. All right, I'm going to walk back through these just to make sure I heard you, and then we'll start talking about them. And if you think of anything else, of course we can go back. Um, so, what I think I heard you say was uh, on health that you wanted 100% for at least five years until your dependents out of college. Um, on the severance, wanted that to be at the 20 weeks for at least five years. Mm -hmm. um, 
and on the uh, deferred comp uh, at slash ICMA, and we'll, I'll talk that in a minute, but if you basically wanted that to be the, the same percentage as, as the other appointed positions, um, and then wanted to make sure there was um, some contract provision funding for that, uh, that MMC certification, or certification, is that the right? Certification. Language? Okay. Did I, did I capture it all? Did I miss anything? No. Okay. Um, so let's start with the easy one on the, on the MMC. Um, so that's a, a, first of all, it's, a, it's fantastic that you're pursuing that, staying relevant in the profession, growing in the profession. That's the kind of clerk we, we want in the city. Um, so wholeheartedly support that. In fact, I think we already have talked about a standard co uh, contract calls that, that talks about uh, continuing professional education and the, the one provision you called it out is basically just it's included in the city's annual budget mm -hmm. so basically we you know if it's a tight year we you know the commission may you know tighten some of those things up um, but the, the you know, there's a, pr a mechanism to get that approved for you as a part of the city's budget and then that would be that would be done and I also think we were going to make a, um, a, a requirement that you um, achieve that certification, but I think you already have it, right? The, the one below this, not the MMC, but the C. I just submitted it yeah. uh, for their approval. Yeah. So. so we were going to put some window in there that, you know, hey, within a certain amount of time, which gave you plenty of time. I don't, I don't want to, you know, put it on a you know, tight timeline, but something give you plenty of time, but have that be a minimum requirement. And then certainly pursuing this is something I think the, the commission would be, would be happy to support. Um, on the, uh, so let's, let's talk about, um, let's talk about the deferred, uh, the, the, let's talk about, reti let's, let's use the word retirement, if, if, I, if I may. So ICMA and, and deferred comp is got a whole kind of retirement contribution percentage. Um, so here's, here's my, my thoughts on that. I'm, I'm happy to work towards a goal of a percentage. I, I don't personally want to, it, it's, it, to me it's irrelevant what other appointments have because you know, as I work with Kyle, he's in a whole different phase of his career. So he may be focused, something else may be much more meaningful to him than this. So I, I didn't benchmark any of these terms really against all the other positions here. I benchmarked them more against the market in general. Um, so when I look at that um, with the 10% with the in the ICMA and then what I had proposed with kind of this growing deferred compensation, that would put you after five years, you know, you're up to about 14% that's going into uh, deferred compensation. So, uh, you know, I think when you look at that in total, that's that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty healthy retirement benefit. Um, so, I, I I don't know if you were looking at that combined or if you were just focusing on the 10% or if it means anything to you, you know, to. Renita, help me out and Carrie, is, is there a difference to us between putting it in a deferred comp bucket versus this ICMA bucket? There's really no, no. There's really no difference to us, right? It's the same. Okay. Um, so did you have a percentage in mind that you thought was what you felt was the right kind of retirement percentage you were trying to get to at some point? or? So this number, just to make sure... Yeah. To verify this number right here, the ten percent is yep. going to grow according to this every year. So this will is no. that what you're saying? No. So so I've got they've got two different two different things. So every year, ten percent of your salary is going into a retirement account. Mm -hmm. That's what this top one is. Then the, the the bottom one is as the years progress at year two, an additional two percent starts going in. So that total is 12% that's going in. And so after five years, you're up to 14% of your salary is going into a retirement account. So it starts at 10 and then grows to 14 and then that's it. Now that number is growing each year, presuming you had salary increases. So if your salary is going from you know, 73 to 80, you'd be getting more because you're getting a percentage of a higher number. Um, so I guess what I, what I'd be willing to consider, and we can, we'll, we'll talk through this is, you know, can we get you to that number a little quicker? Uh, I think we could. I think we can figure that out along with the severance. Um, but you know, I don't know. Um, look at one other thing here. Where did I put it? 
yeah, from a from a total percentage standpoint, you know, again, I, I think if we can get to that, you know, fourteen percent number, that that's a that's a healthy retirement number. I, I you know, I based on the, the the market day that I saw for clerks and, and other even appointed positions. Um, so, I, the last we'll come back to that. The last one was the severance. You wanted twenty weeks for at least five years. Um, so, I, and I get that you want stability, especially for that kind of next five year five year window. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, what if we what if we did this? Um, you need to remind me the cost to us on the adding a dependent on that health insurance going from 50 to 100 percent that was like 1300 annually 1614 dollars annually okay all right um okay so what about what about this um I don't want to put some provision in where we have to worry about it, you know, happening in, in five years. So I think the city can agree to just funding 100% of your of, of the additional premium for family or dependent care. So be covering 100% of yours, 100% of your of your dependents, and that'll run even beyond that five-year timeline. So if he if he is still in college and unmarried until 26, <laughs> you have other things to worry about. <laughs> But <laughs> health insurance won't be one of them, so okay. we'll, uh, we'll we'll do that. Um, Thank you. So, and on severance, um, I, I hear you. I, I know this is aggressive. I, I'm, I'm I'm trying to take an aggressive posture on the severance. I, I think as a as a general rule, I'm just trying to take an aggressive posture on the severance. So, um, but what if we? So you wanted 20 through five years versus such a sharp decline. Okay. Um, Twenty through five, and then so what if we did twenty weeks through the five years, and then. Um, And then went from, and then took this same step down process over the next uh, over the next five years. So that way you you don't run out of severance until ten years out. And so I'm thinking out loud here. So let me just we're gonna we're gonna find the sweet spot here. So if we do that and that runs out basically, so it's you get ten years that that doesn't run out for. You're covered for five years, and then um, that hasn't really cost us anything unless we pay out. And then, yeah. So here's what I'm thinking: go to 100% on the employee and the and the dependent. Um, Put the severance at 20 weeks for, or tw yeah, 20 weeks for five years, and then start the pro rata from there down. So basically, cross out where it says year one and put year five, and then just all the way down. You'd be year six through ten. So no severance from year from year ten plus, um, and then we can do on the deferred comp. I can. I mean, we can get there a little quicker. So what if we did Four years, you're up to 14% on the deferred comp. So, starting, so you're starting out at 10%. After year two, it goes up to 12%, basically. 
after year three goes up to 13%, and after year four it goes up to 14%. And so for the rest of your, for the rest of your time in New Smyrna, you're at 14% deferred cap, recovering 100% of your dependents, and you've got severance all the way through year 10, really. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just lumping at retirement. I, I would defer to if, if if you want to talk with HR about any advantages between the type of accounts and talk to your tax professionals about that. I'll I'll leave that to you all as long as there's no additional cost to the city that's difference between those two, which I don't think there would be. Um, so yeah, so that that gets you a little quicker. I think from an overall compensation standpoint, that's still really competitive in the marketplace. We've obviously added a little bit of a little bit of cost. I don't look at the services cost because any commission that sits up here and gets rid of you the way you've been performing is, I mean, it's just not going to happen. So I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, and getting you to that 14%, I know it's not right up front, but getting you to that 14% is still going to get you plenty of time to compound and grow that. And I think it'll put you in a good spot. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's a great compromise. Okay. I'm happy with it. Very happy. Are we going to run this from fiscal year, anniversary year? Yeah, so I was going to ask you, actually I'll ask her, what is, I don't want to create some record keeping nightmare. So is there, are there annual dates, so we may not have to, you don't have to answer this definitively right now, but if there's annual dates where there's plan dates or open enrollment type dates that we want to concurrently time these dates with, mm -hmm. um, I'd ask we do that. If, are we in open enrollment now? Or is that my, that's my other job? <laughs> we just closed it. We just closed it, okay. Um, so I wouldn't want to wait a whole year, but maybe we could short short cycle the first year and then get it, get the, the timing synced up to where it happens during like an annual enrollment. Do you get what we're talking about there? Yes. I just want to create it where HR has a whole process for your dates that we, you know, November 12th or whatever that date is. So just need to so double check. <coughs> so run it for November 12th. So the next. Right, yeah. so next November 12th. 2020 would constitute yeah. year two, or no, it would be 2021. This would be year one. Yeah, this okay. is, we're going into year one. Okay, starting. Um, yeah. Uh, obviously, all the other terms would start right away, um, including like the diminishing severance. That would be anniversary date type, anniversary date of the contract type mm -hmm. stuff. So the only thing that would be have a different date would be that the the deferred compensation right. stuff, the retirement stuff. Did you understand? Does that all make sense to you? It does. Okay. Yes. So all the other terms would go into effect immediately and would anything that's annual would cycle based on the date of the that's contract. Right. Um, deferred comp is just, in, in fact, it's just going to get there a little sooner because we're going to do it based on whenever the annual enrollment cycle is so that it just coincides with HR's entire process. Okay. That'll be October 1. Yeah, so it'll be October 1 next year. That'll go okay. from... Yeah. Okay, so just to be clear, I'm going to run back through these terms and... Um, any questions or comments or anything you all want to add, feel free to jump in. If you have anything that jumps out at you, feel free to jump in. So base salary, 73K. Uh, again, to be clear, that's no, in, no increase in year one. That'll be timed with whenever the annual increases are. Uh, and that'll be automatically at the rate of the directors. You know, the commission can always do something different. Uh, car allowance at 150. Health insurance, 100% of yours and your dependent. Um, I'm going to just make one line and call it retirement at starting at 10%, going to 12% in year two, 13% in year three, 14% in year four. Leave the 192 hours and then PTO and holidays consistent with other director level positions. Leave payout 384 hours max, and then severance 20 weeks level through the first five years, and then declining 16 weeks a year. I may have said that wrong. 20 weeks level through the first five years. I don't know if that's what I said. 20 weeks level through the first five years, and then 16 weeks at year six, 12 at year seven, eight at year eight, four at year nine and zero year ten. Did I miss anything? Anything you all want to cover? One thing I don't know about life insurance, is that 
standard benefit? Um, she would just go up to the director level where they cover 1% of the salary. Okay. Yeah, I guess I should call it. Any other benefits that are standard at the director level, you'll automatically get any of those that apply. So things like life insurance or some of those, anything that's standard is, is Long -term disability. deemed to be included. I think there's some contract clauses that, that we'll, we'll call out for that. Um, anything else here that we've talked about from a contract standpoint that we just want to talk through before we... Having the, the review language in there. Yep. Yep. So there'll be language about an annual review process. Um, we will codify, the commission will codify what that, um, you know, what, uh, what that review is. Um, we're working on it, but obviously that's subject to change with future commissions. That won't be a part of this contract, but the contract will contemplate that there will be an annual review process. Okay. Um, but it doesn't, and there will be duties outlined in the contract. Um, perhaps with a little more detail than, than in the past, we'll, we'll see. But um, but the, the the annual review process won't trump any of these terms. It will just inform them. So it'll you know obviously a really negative review could lead to severance. A really positive review might lead to additional compensation. But the contract is the governing document. But it will clearly state that there's an annual review process. Okay. And we'll know what those goals and objectives are by April, right? Yeah. Even though it's so, we will have the review form that this commission is going to use. We will have by we will have by April, um, this this April. Um, again, that's where I would say that that review document is not going to be part of the contract. So mm -hmm. those term, you know, what is reviewed by each commission in future years, because again, you're going you're going to be here through a lot of commissions. Mm -hmm. So. Some future commission may say, hey, we really want to focus on this or this, or, you know, so that, that may kind of ebb and flow. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know how else to, <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. I mean, that is what it is, right? So, but keep doing what so you're doing, and I don't think it'll be an issue. I guess just one clarifying, so the, the evaluation form would change every year? I mean, I guess, no. you know, unless we made it, part of the contract, which is getting a lot, I mean, it's getting way ahead of where we're at right now today, and I don't know that, I don't know that that's, I haven't really thought about it until this point in time, to be honest, so, I don't think it should, I don't think it would, but, I mean, I, she's going to sit up there and I don't have one, I guess is my point. Renina, any, anything to add, anything we missed? Any? Comfortable with everything? I'm comfortable. Okay. I'm okay. Um, so again, you're going to get uh, a final contract. Carrie's going to work these terms into that contract. We'll make sure you got time to review it. Pass it around. If you have trusted advisors, make sure they have a chance to review it. Um, we won't be able to negotiate any of those things outside of the same you know type setting. Uh, can respond to questions or <laughs> clarification. Um, so when you get that, if there are things that you you're just you know, you feel, hey, this just isn't going to work for you, um, let me know, and we'll set up another meeting like this to, to talk through it and figure it out. But again, it's, it's going to be, outside of these terms, I've read a lot of city clerk contracts, and there's nothing, all the rest of the terms are fairly standard, so we're going to be fairly standard. So. I do have one question. Sure. What happens, uh, so on November 12th, when they have this meeting to prove it, what if... Uh, the commission can't come to a <laughs> Our commission, decision. no. They well, would, that would never happen. <laughs> what happens if it's a, a vote in the negative? What would happen to me? We would go back to the drawing table. So, as of, so you're under a contract right now that states that if you don't roll into this clerk position, we don't agree to, I'm paraphrasing greatly, correct me if you need to jump in, but you're under a contract that says if you don't roll into this clerk position, that your old position is always open for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the commission can't agree, look, I think, I, don't, I never speak for the commission, but my read of the last few discussions that we've had publicly, I think the commission is, is totally on board with you becoming the next clerk. Now, whether or not they don't like some term that I've put in here that we've agreed to and that hangs up the process, that would really, to me, just put us back to this drawing board, or we could maybe even work it out right there live on November 12th. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't see that going all the way from we're here negotiating a contract to have you be the clerk to you're not going to be the clerk. That would be a dramatic shift in strategy that I would not support, and I don't think the commission would. Okay. I just, yeah, I didn't know that help? they were allowed to discuss that. Um, 
that. Further, that's my, on November 12th. So hopefully I will have you sign the contract first, mm -hmm. and they'll be presented with this contract. Now, they may change one or two things, but I would look to you and say, Kelly, is this change agreeable to you? Okay. Um, so that's how that would work. And then I would have to, after the fact, revise it, have you sign a new one, and then have him sign. Makes sense. I have no further questions. I'm happy with it. Okay. Well, I look forward to getting the final contract and voting you in as city clerk officially on November 12th, hopefully. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thank you. overdue and it's great to see it it's uncomfortable as it is to watch <laughs> I'm sure it was just as uncomfortable doing it uh, yeah so I really appreciate that and I know the citizens of New Smyrna Beach do and and I know um, uh, they will welcome the uh, the resolution of this to the satisfaction of everybody so congratulations the other members of the public seeing none close the close public participation and close the meeting <laughs> um, okay, so we'll call this meeting to, to order. Again, for the record, the staff and attendance, Carrie Avalon, uh, Renina Fuller, and Khaled Rashidat, and myself, um, open meeting to the public to discuss um, terms of the city manager's agreement. Um, Apologize if you're listening to the last meeting, but just want to restate some of these same things. So, um, want to want to clarify that you know I think right off the top we both want the same thing, and that is to reach an agreement on terms that are fair to you, fair to the city, to the citizens, uh, and that keep you as the as the uh, in, in New Smyrna Beach as the as the city manager, um, and acknowledging the the awkwardness of this, but we'll get through it. Is what it is. Uh, the goal today is to talk through these key financial terms um, and then those will be folded into a larger contract that we, we have in process and we'll distribute that as soon as possible. Uh, if you have any issues once we get through this, if you have any issues with any of those contract elements, um, we can have another meeting like this to talk through talk through those, but I think those will be fairly boilerplate and standard. I've read a lot of city manager contracts over the past week. and they're all pretty much created equal outside of these terms. So that's kind of why I didn't want to sit here and go through a whole line out of contracts, just wanted to distill it down to this. So, um, As I mentioned, I have spent a ton of time looking at as much data as possible from other cities. Um, to clarify, I didn't focus so much about what any prior employees in New Smyrna had, what other employees in New Smyrna have currently. Um, I, I focus more on the, the 
the market conditions, and then what I thought might be advantageous for you and your situation. But of course, I don't know that. So this is a starting point, um, and you know that's where we're gonna we're gonna talk through some things. Um, I expect you to have questions. Expect you to have comments or requests. Uh, it's not going to be held against you by me or anyone else if you're making reasonable requests, even if we can't accommodate or see eye to eye. Um, once we get through this process, you we put all that behind us and, and move on. So don't don't feel like you because oh, yeah. we have to work together. And at, at the end of it all, you know, it's not going to hold it against you. Um, I will say though, I've tried to be fair. That I didn't approach this as a used car deal where I tried to come in with some lowball offer and we rule over every term. Like that's just not my style. It's not how I want to be treated as an employee. It's not how I treat my employees. Um, and then lastly, Carrie and Renina are here to, to answer any questions that either of us have to clarify. Um, and they're here to provide advice to me. And I know this is different because they're usually here to provide advice to all of us. Uh, but in this case, we just have to be very careful on that, that they're here representing the city. And um, so they're not your advisors in this case, but of course they'll answer any questions. Um, so I do encourage you after we get through this and once you get a contract, um, you know, review that with any legal or tax professionals you feel necessary and we can make sure you have the time to, to do that. So um, so my next thing, I was just going to kind of talk through this. I know you've got it before, but of course we haven't been able to negotiate or talk about it. So um, I was going to just kind of run through the, the basic terms and then hear any feedback or thoughts that, that you had on what I had outlined. Pretty straightforward. A few things though were a little bit different. So I wanted to see where, where, you're, uh, where you're at on that. Things though were a little bit different, so we to see where, where you're uh, where you're at on that. So base salary uh, proposed by the city's uh, 152,000. It's uh, just a skosh above where you're at currently, just kind of getting to a round number. Um, no increase in year one. We just went through that process, uh, and then future years would be increased at the rate of all the other directors automatically, uh, and then that can always be further adjusted by the commission. So that'll be spelled out in the the contract. Uh, a car allowance of 600 per month and that would be encompassing all travel within a hundred mile radius. Um, anything outside of that the reimbursement you know, process would be normal. Uh, health insurance, you are already uh, at a hundred percent of your uh, insurance is covered and then 50 percent of the additional premium for any family or dependents is covered. Um, I propose to just leave that as is. FRS, uh, you are currently at 14.6%, um, and I propose to leave that at is, as is. Um, leave earned uh, and leave payout, and so the, the next few are a couple I wanted to kind of talk through in tandem and just make sure you, you understood. So right now, as it's been explained to me, you're under a basically kind of grandfathered into this older plan where you're earning 320 hours annually. Uh, so it's two months for folks counting at home. That's, that's a lot of leave, and you're a faithful employee. You're never going to take anywhere near that. Um, so what I've proposed is that if that's a benefit that you're not even using, and we're accruing this mass, you know, going through this process every year, uh, I've heard I think you're pretty generous with it. They give a lot of it away, or at least some of it, but no doubt some of it's just kind of being lost in the system. So my proposal was to bring that in line with the other director level positions. So bring that leave, the earned leave, not the leave payout, we'll talk about the next, but bring the earned leave down to be consistent with the other director level positions. Um, but in recognition of that, to put some in, put some percentage basically of that into a deferred compensation. So monetizing that basically, I feel like it's a win-win for both of us because it's something you're not able to take home now uh, but it does cost us money on the books to have that, uh, so we can we can have each have a each have a win win. Um, so to be clear, that was going from 320 hours down to the 192 hours max annual accrual, and then uh, holidays consistent with director level. Leave payout. Um, my understanding on this, and and we we can have some discussion on this. Make sure that it's my understanding is right, but is that right now it's a you're maxed, you, you can take with you if you leave 880 hours, and you have more than that in the bank right now, is my understanding. Uh, and then 360 hours, up, you can take 50% of your total up to 360 hours, is, is my understanding of what the max is right now. 
and I'm going to pause there and make sure that I didn't transpose anything. Okay, so that's right. So my proposal was to leave that as same. No, I don't want to take away anything you've earned that you had already, that's higher than what current employees have, but you came in under a different time, and so my proposal was to leave that as uh, existing. Uh, deferred compensation, so this is in addition to that 14.6% of the FRS, um, in recognition of the decrease in the leave payout, my thought was to do uh, starting at 3,500 per year level for the term of the of the contract, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then the last part was severance. My proposal was starting at 10 week salary in year one, and then going down to uh, ending at no severance over year five. So kind of prorating down to to no severance. And um, and talking with Carrie and Renine, and again, correct me if you have a different understanding, but since you've entered the drop, I think this contract can have a finite end date because there's a there's a transition process that's forced upon us by the by the state. So I don't know what that exact date is. For talking purposes, we'll call it five years. So it's August thirty first of twenty four. Eight thirty one twenty four. So no. <laughs> Don't say it's so, don't say it's so no, joyous. Saying, no, no, I'm saying it's them, yeah. not me. I know, I know. So, um, so for talking purposes, when you hear me talk about the contract term, I'll use five years. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm meaning. We're gonna have that date in the contract, um, not to run you out, but honestly, it's a call to action. I have to. I know you have to, and that means we or whoever is sitting up here at that time has to also make sure they have a plan for that. So this is going to help drive that yes. conversation as well with having that yes. having that end date. Um, so I know there's a couple of wrinkles in there that we haven't had a chance to really dive into and talk through yet. So first first blush, what are your, what are your thoughts? Um, it's, it's first of all, it feels weird to be on this side of the table because <laughs> usually I'm, I'm on the other side negotiating for the city. Um, I don't do a good negotiation for myself. I'm going to tell you that up front. Um, but having invested 30 years with the city, yep. I think uh, I, I deserve uh, a little bit more. Okay. And I'll tell you what what areas. Yeah. The salary, uh, I think it's fine. I'm, I'm not I'm not looking forward to to be uh, you know in the millions. So 152 is fine. Okay. The car allowance is fine. The health insurance, I think, and and this is this is my what I'm throwing on the table. Okay. Uh, it's it's 100 percent for the employee, but it's it's I would say 100 percent for the for the dependents for the first two years, and then after that will be back to zero, actually. There is no 50%. Okay. Um, and that's because you, you, I mean, you, you think your life situation will change? I mean, yeah, so well you need it for two years. Yes, yeah, just the first okay. two years, and then right. after that, it's done. Okay. Now, on the, uh, on the FRS, right now, if I didn't join the drop, the city was um, putting in 25 and change percent. Since I went to the drop, it went to 14.6 percent. My, what I'm asking is the difference between the 14.6 and the 25 and change, like it's about 10.81. Okay. That should go into my whether it's ICMA or whatever. Yeah. I think for an employee who invested my entire life in the city of Muscombe Beach. I think I deserve this. Okay. Um, the leave earned. I earned this 320 hours. It's not like I, I mean, you know, when you started as a 192 as a director, but I've been here for 30 years, so I, I get this. And I, I, I've never used it. Yeah. And I, I mentioned this to you that I've gave, gave people 50 hours, 100 hours if, when they're sick. So I think 320 is, is too much. But I think 192 is, is probably way too, way too down. Okay. I think 240 would be a number that I would, that would be probably reasonable. Okay. The um, deferred compensation, I think it's, it's fine. Now we go to the severance. And that's a, that's a serious, uh, you know, it, this position is a, is a highly 
political position. So, you know, you're working for the pleasure of the commission. I mean, everybody knows that, and, and you take a risk for that. The, um, the state's legislative, it's actually, it says no more than 20 weeks. Yep. And I know some people, they say, well, what happened is, you know, in the last five months, you know, something happened. My, what I'm suggesting is it's supposed to be 20 weeks. And then if, if that's the case, the last five months, no compensation. But, you know, 10 weeks really for, uh, I have never seen uh, a city manager or a city attorney in that regard that they have uh, 10 weeks. I've never seen one. Yeah. Um, okay. And I've never seen in such a way. And I, I like the, the way that you had it. And, and, and you know, it's, it's a very creative out of the box. But it just, it doesn't really protect the position. It doesn't protect my investment that I have for the city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I look forward. I, I, I came in with dignity, and I'm, I'm planning on to leave in with dignity. So. Okay. So let me walk back through these, just basically restating and make sure, sure I capture everything. Um, and so um, on health insurance, basically 100% are dependent for two years, mm -hmm. fa family slash dependent And then after that, they go to zero. There is no 50% even. Yep. Uh, FRS, you're asking for the, the difference the between difference between where you work. So 10.81 is the number you're throwing out. 25.41 to 14.6. Okay. And it doesn't cost the city any money because they were paying it anyway. So it's not like I'm, I'm asking for additional. Yeah. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. So on the leave earned going to 240 hours and then on the severance 20 weeks and then uh, none though the last, the last five months of the contract okay so did I capture everything correctly yep okay um, so let's start Renina to put you on the spot or give you time to look if you need to what is that cost to on the dependent family dependent care that the additional 50 percent on, on uh, 2644 dollars Annual cost. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So on. So I, I think that's fair on the health insurance. I mean, it's it's fairly common in, in some of the other city manager contracts that I saw. Um, I honestly didn't start there because I don't know all you had on your plan or how what that term would be um, so yeah I would say we can do that we'll go to the hundred percent and um, I, I, don't, I don't even see a need, if, if your situation is changing anyway in two years and, you know if you got kids rolling off or whatever then let's just we'll just leave it I don't want to have to craft language and worry about going back and so we'll just set it at hundred percent of employee and family dependents um, let's talk about um, so let's talk about uh, the FRS and the deferred comp and I really want to look at that as one let's just call it a bucket called retirement for lack sure. of better because it's we have them in two different buckets but it's really all the same thing and it all costs me the same money so um, Renina make sure I understand this right so the, the when, when an employee goes so if, if Colin weren't moving up to be city manager weren't in that process and it gone from entered the drop as a as a regular employee, if you will. What would have what would the rates have done, and, and what would the impact have been? Okay, if he was a regular employee as he was, as yeah, previously, yeah. he was a senior management yeah, previously. So, yeah. so that was twenty five point four. So regardless of when he entered drop, his rate would have dropped to fourteen point six. When you enter drop, that rate changes. When you enter drop, that rate that rate changes. Correct. And so, what happens to that ten point eight one percentage or whatever in that in that well, scenario? The, well, the city doesn't know. The city would no longer contribute that. His contribution stops, and all that money goes in one bucket for yeah. when he finishes drop. Okay. And the difference in that would be uh, sixteen thousand and some change. Sixteen thousand four. That's what that ten point eight one is. Yes. Give me that number again. Sixteen. Sixteen thousand four thirty one twenty. 
431. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I, you know, I, on even a faithful employee, this is really a great story to me. You know, it's a great story for our staff to see that if you're if you're loyal to New Smyrna, New Smyrna is loyal to the people that are loyal to New Smyrna. Um, and and you can start. I don't know where you started in your, your professional career here, but you can start and. You know, some department that isn't the the, the corner office, and, and you can end your career in the corner office. I mean, that's a that's a great story um, that you know resonates with me. So, um, so I, I want to make sure that we don't get we get hung up on this. I guess my you know the the notion though is that it, it is it, it will cost us money. I mean, that's just the the short of it. It is costing us that sixteen grand because. If we weren't doing this today, that contribution percentage would have gone from 25 to 14 percent. So, um, but that being said, I think we've got a couple of things we can play with here. So, um, but I gave up the hours on the yeah, the I know, 20. I mean, that's yeah. uh, so that so. It, that I was linking to this deferred compensation, that 3,500 per year. What I'm thinking is, if we if we strike that and kind of roll it all into just this one FRS, just just forget that for a minute and just say, if we got FRS to the the 25.41 overall percent where it is now, um, make the adjustment to the hours, which is valued at, I mean that that has value to it. That's in the ballpark of this number, I don't have it right in front of me. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is, if we, I don't think I, I can't do both. I don't think I can do both. But if if we can agree to the 25.41, we'll take one we strike that, we keep the hours, and then on the leave, um, I mean, on, I'm sorry, on the severance. Again, that's something I, I I hope doesn't come into play in this contract. I don't think it will. Um, but what I'd like to see is, um, I'm okay going to 20 weeks, I agree. I mean, 10 is on the low side. I was trying to set a new trend. <laughs> so we got other cities to look at ours. I say yeah, that, I, I, I like it because it's out of the box. Yeah, so, um, it just, it's so I, I, I'm okay going to the 20 weeks. I mean, that, that, is, that is market. Um, why don't we go 20 weeks through, um, why don't we go 20 weeks through four years? And then the last, the last year, is that's fine. is down to zero. That's fine. Um, so that hasn't really cost us anything. That's down that much. That's okay. Uh, okay. So let me let me run back through this. Make sure we're on the same page on all these. Nina, Carrie, if you have any questions or comments as you think of things. Um, so base salary, 152, car allowance, 600, uh, health insurance, 100% of you and the employee, uh, FRS, or whatever retirement vehicle you choose to put that additional percentage in, as long as it, the impact to yeah, the city is, is the same uh, at the 25.41, which we'll call the existing rate. Um, Leave earned at 240. Leave payout is what it is. Didn't make any changes there. That other deferred compensation we talked about goes away. Severance at 20 weeks for four years and then none in the last year. Did I capture everything? Mm -hmm. Is everybody's notes jive on, on the that? thing is just on the. Okay. Go on ahead, the, sorry. On the health insurance for, yep. the first, for the first two years. Yeah, and I was just going to do that for just the term of the contract. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just do it over the five years. I mean, I, it, it may not, you may not need it over that five yeah, years. I'm, I'm just one year. I'm contemplating that you probably won't. That's why I was on, on some of the other stuff. Um, so one contract clause that um, that I saw in another contract that I liked personally um, that I was going to have uh, city attorney build in that I just wanted to bounce off of you. Frankly, I think you'll be okay with it. It may be the commission that actually, <laughs> maybe the commission that, that questions it, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to push it out there. 
Um, and if this calls, is this how you've worded it? No, this is the one we found. So ours may be slightly differently worded, but it says, in no event may manager be terminated within 90 days before or after any municipal election for the selection or recall of one or more of the members of the city council, except by unanimous vote of the council. So what that does, it gives you just a little protection from some of the politics that you talked about. Um, obviously, you know, egregious type things, you're gonna get unanimous vote, unanimous vote out against you. So it's not giving any kind of a carte blanche, whatever. Um, but I, I think, I, I saw this in a couple different places, but this particular language resonated. Um, so I like that. Uh, I like that calls to be added in. Again, I don't know how the commission will feel on that, but um, I was proposing to add that clause. All the other, all the other ones are fairly standard. Anything else that we've talked about as we've reviewed contracts? The evaluation. Yeah, yeah that's that a, yeah. Added. So evaluation, we're going to add a clause on that. We talked through this with Carrie. The oh, no, it's Carrie, Kelly. Um, the basically, we're just saying that an evaluation will be done, and we're going to put a, a, a time frame in there annually that it will be done. That evaluation, the, the actual form and that process can change over time. That's not going to be a part of this contract. All the contract is going to say is that basically you're subject to that. And basically what we're thinking there is that can kind of ebb and flow and evolve with different commissions as they come and go. So you don't have too many more commissions out of you, but you got a, you got a few. So, um, so I can't guarantee you what that process will look like, even with ours That's at this point, but it'll be yeah. there will be some process. That's fine. I, I like evaluations. Anything else? No, I just want to thank you and uh, thank the commission and, and thank the city. I mean, this is the city that I invested my life again in it. And thirty years, it's been uh, it's been a heck of a ride. And I want to finish it with as I mentioned. Is I want in with dignity. I want to leave with dignity. That's all. I mean, this is uh, I love New Smyrna. I love the people. Uh, so that's. Okay. Well, I think I think this is competitive. Uh, I think it's competitive in the market. Um, Renato, we'll make sure when we present both these contracts to the commission that we get some of that market data that you and I have done, that, so the commission can see the final terms kind of in that context from a total compensation. So we'll see you and I talk more about that. But um, yeah, I, Colin, I think um, I think you've earned this. I think you've earned the right for this position. I look forward to, as I said in the evaluation, I look forward to seeing you bring your your brand of leadership and to to the team, uh, and excited about the excited about the things that, that will evolve on under your leadership, and then excited about the things that we can be consistent on under your leadership, and that's the exciting balance I think you bring. So, uh, public comment. Any members of the public wish to comment? Seeing none, we will close this meeting. Thank you.